Welcome to Bus Pirate Week Day 2. Today we're going to talk about Bus Pirate hardware. We've got all of our accessories out and I'll show you how they work and talk about our plans to develop them in the future. Yesterday we talked about how to develop for the Bus Pirate. If you missed that, there should be a link below the video in this post. Uh, check it out if you're into firmware development. Tomorrow we'll talk about Bus Pirate cases and show you some different user submitted cases and some case designs that we have in the works for the Bus Pirate. Later today we'll have a few more things from our trip to Tokyo. Shaka is going to show you what he bought at Akihabara. And I'm going to write up our awesome flight on Finnair, hoping they'll give us a discount on the trip to Maker Faire China in April. First, before we go further though, I want to show you these new PIC32s in DIP packages that Peter sent us. And I'll bring the camera in closer so we can get a look at that. We've been talking quite a bit lately about Microchip's new 32-bit microcontrollers that come in DIP packages, like this. These are 32 bits like ARMS, but they're actually in an easy to use through hole package that should appeal to a lot of hobbyists. Peter was kind enough to send us three samples of that. Not just a through hole version, but there's also an SOIC version that should be easy to solder too. We prefer the SOIC version because it saves board space and it's a bit easier to route. We've actually got a number of accessories for the Bus Pirate. Yesterday we showed you how we soldered up the Bus Pirate Demo Board version 4 so we could test the one wire, the new one wire routines in the Bus Pirate firmware. This is the Demo Board version 4. We still use this when we go to conventions or conferences and demonstrate the Bus Pirate because it's handy to have a whole bunch of real chips that we can actually show people how it works in real life. But for production, this is way too expensive because buying and placing these chips, especially the through hole parts, gets really expensive as well as testing it because you have to do the individual test to make sure they each work. So Shock came up with the brilliant idea to do an integrated board. This board uses a single chip. It's demo board version 5. The difference here is we've programmed this little PIC16F to imitate a whole bunch of different chips. Uh, EEPROM data storage chips, a pulse width modulator chip, an analog digital converter chip and more. And so with this one chip, which costs about a dollar in quantity, we can change jumpers here and it becomes different chips. It's a little more work on our part because we have to develop the firmware for it, but it's not so bad and there's a lot of libraries out there already to help get us started. With this, your Bus Pirate just connects to the proper connections over here, and then we'll have a nice illustrated guide that walks you through interfacing the different chips. Each mode is based on an existing device, so it's not uh, pulled out of thin air. You'll also be able to look at the original device data sheet and follow the manufacturer's directions to interface this board as well. But not all the commands will be supported. We still have a bit of work to go on that, but we hope to have that done in a few months and on sale. It'll be USB, or sorry, it'll be uh, serial upgradable because it's got a serial connection and the Bus Pirate has uh, is essentially a USB to serial device in the right mode. We'll add a serial bootloader on here so that it, the firmware can be updated if there's any bugs or anything, or as we add new devices. Uh, one thing we've had on sale for a long time is the Bus Pirate LCD adapter. Uh, that's this one here. It also comes with a cable. It connects to a standard HD44780 character LCD like this. They have a 14 or 16 pin header up here and you attach it to the LCD adapter like this. We used a female header on the LCD adapter, so if you need to change to a female header like we use on the display, it's just a matter of sticking a piece of pen header in there and then putting the LCD on top of it. This is the latest version of the LCD adapter. It includes a contrast adjustment, a backlight resistor adjustment, and also you can change these jumpers to enable the pulse width modulator on the backlight so you can actually do backlight dimming from the bus pirate as well. But the goal of this board is just to let people test out their LCDs really quickly uh, without designing a specific circuit or something. Um, let's say the way it works is uh, the bus pirate connects here and it uses the SPI interface of the bus pirate, that's three wires and data is clocked serially into this chip, that's a HC595 uh, chip, and that takes the serial input from the bus pirate and puts it as parallel output here on the header. So each instruction for, 
for the LCD actually takes about three or four uh, updates of the 595 chip uh, to get the clock, to get the data set up, to raise the clock, to lower the clock, and then reset the data again. But because the SPI on the Bus Pirate is so fast, up to 10 megahertz, this actually happens really quickly, and it's way faster than the first version uh, I squared C LCD adapter that we were using with a PCF uh, 8475 chip, I believe, but don't quote me on that. Uh, the adapter includes a handy 10 pin cable that you can use to connect it to a Bus Pirate, and it should be converted compatible with the most recent versions with the shrouded header and on the old, older versions without the shrouded header it's not really so important. Also I wanted to talk about this. This is a, an accessory that we haven't done a whole lot of work with or we haven't pushed a whole lot. This is the PIC programming adapter for the Bus Pirate. Now the Bus Pirate can program PIC 24F, PIC 30, uh, PIC 33 and some PIC 18FJ chips all without an adapter. Those you can program with your stock out-of-the-box bus pirate. But some chips such as the 12F, the 16F, and the 18F that are not J parts they require a 13 volt uh, they require 13 volts on the reset pin to bump them up into programming mode and that's what this adapter does. We have an MC6403 uh, boost chip here, and it uses a little inductor, a diode, and a capacitor to boost the 5 volt input from the bus pirate up to 13 volts. And then the rest of it over here is just a switching circuit that lets the bus pirate turn the 13 volts on and off uh, to the chip that's being programmed. We had 20 of these made initially and sold them through Seed Studio. It took about a year to get rid of them, but lately Robots and Taken and a couple other people on the forum have really stepped up the work on the PIC uh, programming software and it now actually supports quite a few PICs, so it makes sense now for us to get this into production. We built this to be stackable, so that it plugs into the Bus Pirate header like so and doesn't take an extra cable or any extra room sourcing cables and, and getting all that stuff together is more expensive than just using a, a simple female header there. And we were discussing this in the forum. These are going to cost about $4.80 a piece to manufacture and we'll sell them somewhere around $7. The majority of the proceeds we're going to roll back into the software. We're going to try to kick some money back to robots and the other developers who have been working so hard on the software. And finally I wanted to talk a little bit about cables. The Bus Pirate is pretty hard to use without some sort of probe cable. This is the cheap probe cable seat has been putting together for us since the beginning. It's got uh, rainbow colored wires and 10 cheap connectors. Uh, most of them are hook connectors like this, but uh, some of them are grabbing connectors like this. Now what we actually like for the Bus Pirate is we've been using these one-to-one -one female connectors. These are also available at Seed. I think they sell 50 of them for around $5. And we really like these because most of the time when we're connecting up to something, we're going from one pin to another pin on another device. So if we're connecting up the Bus Pirate to the demo board, it's from one pin header to another. And it's the same when we work with a breadboard. We usually end up with a piece of pin header stuck into the breadboard that we can put the cable into. Show you a couple other things while we're here. I just wanted to show you quickly the evolution of the Bus Pirate. This was version, this was the original version 3A. You see we've stripped off the FGDI chip there. We did that in another video, maybe you remember it. Uh, this had the unshrouded header and the header wasn't centered either. It was just kind of hanging out here. And then we moved up to the version 3.5A, we added the shrouded header here, and uh, we moved to the smaller TSSOP uh, 4066 quad switch. You can see we use the SOIC version there and the SSOP version there. Each of the resistors where we can are now in a resistor pack, so you can see the resistor arrays were used instead of 
a whole bunch of discrete resistors. That saved us, well, it saved seed <laughs> a little bit of money uh, for the placement because each of these counts is one part to place and it replaces four. So there's about 16 fewer part placements on the version 3.5 than there was on the version 3A. For the future, we're working really hard to get our stuff together and brand our boards. So this is the uh, Bus Blaster version 4 prototype. See, we've got a big, giant, dangerous prototypes logo on there. We're going to try to be really good about labeling things and getting our logo on it. In the past, we've only used very small logos like that there. You might notice it on some of your hardware and also putting our name. But for the future, we're going to start with these big, giant silkscreen logos wherever we can. Yesterday, Mick asked in the comments if we plan to do any sort of bundle or accessory kit for the Bus Pirate. That's absolutely where we're headed. We'd like to have a nice package that includes everything, uh, some sort of nice case. We'll discuss the cases more tomorrow. But also things like a Bus Pirate pick programming adapter, a uh, demo board of some sort, the LCD adapter with a cable, and some sort of probe cable or probe wires and also some sort of carrying case. This is actually the case from the Celia Logic, which is a great little device. I also want to take this chance to show you some of the higher pro quality probe cables. These are uh, Easy Hooks, I believe the XM line. You can see they're, they're much finer and higher quality hooks, but they're also 225 each when you buy a thousand. That's pretty pricey. That's, that's way more than we're dealing with right now. That's not on our agenda. The seed now has a probe cable that has the 10 pin end and then 10 high quality female connectors on the end. So the goal is that we can actually arrange for some sort of higher pro quality probe hook if you want to add your own then you just pop it onto the cable. That gives people an option and it also keeps us from having to order 500 probe cables with uh, you know, thousands of hooks on them that cost 225 each that might end up rotting in a warehouse in China if we can't sell them all. Well, that's the end of Bus Pirate Day 2. Thanks for watching. We realize that if we want to be the next Adafruit or Spark Fun, we got to be more visible. So for, look for more of these videos outlining what's going on in the workshop every day and our plans for the future. We hope we can get good feedback from you too. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be back to talk about Bus Pirate cases and enclosures and some of our plans for the future. Uh, later on this week, we hope to receive a couple of reels from a company in China of our most popular and most commonly used components. We'll do an unboxing video of that too and, and show you what that looks like. And if you have a bus pirate, please help us out by testing the latest firmware release candidate. It should be pretty stable. Let us know what works, what doesn't. If you have any problems, we'll do our best to fix the bugs and help you out in the forum. Thank you so much. Tomorrow we'll be back to talk about cases and different enclosures for the Bus Pirate. I don't know what else. Totally blanked.